Here we're going to look at the pathways going into and out of the spinal cord. And for now, we're just going to ignore what's going on inside the central nervous system. So first, let's look at the sensory pathways, beginning where the signal is first picked up, that is, at the receptors. And so we're not going to go into great detail about how receptors work here, but I'm going to briefly cover two broad categories of receptors. And these categories are largely based on whether, where they're located and in also, roughly speaking, whether or not we are conscious of them. Which brings us to some terms that are going to become more important when we talk about the motor division. And this concerns whether something is part of the somatic or visceral pathway. And broadly speaking, somatic sensory neurons are bringing in information about the outside world, whereas visceral sensory neurons are bringing in information about the internal conditions and the status of our organ systems. So somatic sensory neurons are bringing information from exteroceptors, the obvious examples being the sensory receptors embedded within the skin, whereas visceral sensory neurons are picking up information from enteroceptors embedded within the internal organs. So the term somatic means body, and the covering of your body, your skin, contains many different types of exteroceptors picking up various stimuli, various types of touch, along with temperature and pain, for example. And so we're generally conscious of sensations coming from these sensory pathways, particularly when it's something we should be paying attention to and can take action toward. And then when we get to the special senses, senses these pathways also start with specialized exteroceptors. And this category can get a little messy, but I usually think of these as under the somatic pathway, because we're conscious of them. And as opposed to these somatic pathways bringing in conscious sensations concerning the external environment from exteroceptors, there is also the visceral pathways bringing in unconscious sensations concerning the internal environment from enteroceptors. So these visceral sensory neurons are monitoring the internal systems like the digestive, respiratory, cardiovascular, systems providing information about things like pressure, oxygen levels, blood acidity through these enteroceptors, and so provide information needed to maintain homeostasis. And it's not strictly true that enteroceptors always carry unconscious information. There's certainly enteroceptors in your gut providing conscious sensation, but that's really the simplest way of thinking about it in broad terms. Plus, it matches up better when we talk about the visceral motor pathways which is strongly associated with unconscious behavior. And to diagram this on a chart, we have receptors, either visceral or somatic, detecting information which is picked up by the dendrites of the sensory neurons, either visceral or somatic, bringing that information through afferent fibers traveling toward the central nervous system. The axons enter the central nervous systems and then usually connect with interneurons within there. And again, we won't get into what happens within the central nervous system, but eventually the information may result in action of the motor division. And within the motor division, here we see a much clearer distinction between the somatic and visceral pathways. The control of these two systems is very different and largely independent of each other, and the anatomy of these two systems is also quite distinct. So here the term somatic is confined to motor innervation of skeletal muscles. Meanwhile, the visceral motor system innervates cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, and glands. So you always want to associate somatic motor pathways with skeletal muscles and voluntary control. The movement of your body through skeletal muscle contraction is ultimately controlled by higher regions of the brain. And it's true that you're not consciously thinking about every movement you make, but the ability to move those muscles are under conscious control. For example, if you decide to flex your biceps, the motor centers in your brain send the signal down to motor neurons in the spinal cord that innervate that muscle, and the signal is passed on, and there you are, flexing. On the other hand, if you want to move things along in your large intestine, you're out of luck. The innervation of smooth muscle lining your digestive tube is completely under involuntary control. The same goes for controlling your blood flow or changing the rate of your heartbeat, for instance. So these are actions beyond our direct control. 
And to the extent that somebody can seemingly slow their heart down, they're doing so indirectly. So the other big difference between the somatic and visceral motor system is an anatomical one. In the case of the somatic motor pathway, there's a single motor neuron in the spinal cord whose axons extends out of the spinal cord and travels all the way to the target muscle. In the visceral motor pathway, there's the motor neuron in the spinal cord, which also exits the spinal cord, but then there's a second motor neuron in the periphery that the message is passed on to. So there's a second motor neuron involved in the visceral motor pathway relaying the signal onto the target organ. We'll talk more about this when we go over the autonomic nervous system, which is basically the visceral motor neuron system. So that autonomic nervous system is further divided into its own two division based on functional and anatomical differences, and that is the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions. Okay, so that's it. And I want to go over this conceptual diagram right here, and you should be able to fill out one of these diagrams out and also relate it to the actual anatomy as best you can. So thinking in terms of circuitry or pathways, we're going to start that pathway at the receptors here, and let's follow those blue lines uh, in the somatic pathway with those external receptors. And I should also note there's information about your body's position coming from those proprio receptors that we didn't talk about yet. So I want you to look that one up on yourself because I'll talk about it a little bit when we talk about the cerebellum. The environmental stimuli picked up by the receptors is transferred to the dendrites of the sensory neurons and travel along the afferent pathway. And once those afferent fibers of the sensory neurons enter the central nervous system and either connect with interneurons there or travel up the spinal cord to the brain, this pathway will be referred to as the ascending pathway. So the sensory neurons bring in that afferent information into the central nervous system at some point, for the most part will connect with those interneurons, which can bring that information up to the brain. And if the brain decided, decided it wanted to act on that information, it will pass the orders for action down a descending pathway to the motor neurons. Those motor neurons located in the spinal cord will send out that information through their axons out into the periphery on the efferent pathway toward their target, the skeletal muscle, the effectors of this somatic pathway. And for most of our study of the nervous system, we are talking about the somatic pathway, that is information from the skin and from special sensory organs, the higher order brain centers that process that information, and the output to the skeletal muscular system. And we'll also talk separately about this whole visceral pathway starting from internal information detected by interoceptors picked up by the dendrites of visceral sensory neurons passing the signal on via different afferent fibers going into the spinal cord and then to distinct regions of the brain and eventually to a set of visceral motor neurons within the spinal cord which will send out their axons out into the periphery which they will there meet up with a second set of motor neurons that will go on to innervate the visceral motor neuron targets. But my default mode for talking about this will be in terms of the somatic pathway. So to finish up, I'd like to put these pathways into context of the actual anatomy using this beautifully dissected nervous system here. Beginning with receptors in the periphery, information travels along the afferent pathway from the periphery, going into the spinal cord, and then ascending to the brain, where all sorts of magic happens. And then motor commands travel via the descending pathway down the spinal cord to the motor neurons, out that efferent pathway to the effectors. So although we're moving into the brain in the next few lectures, this sort of terminology and pathways uh, they're going to come up again frequently when we start talking about the spinal cord and nerves later on. So make sure you keep this kind of figure in mind when we do so. All right. See you later.